guest speaker. This is Lynn. She is going to introduce herself. She's going to talk about her career, um, how she got there, what she does. All right. Give it up for Lynn. Woo! business, Lynn Pernell Photography, LLC. So I'm going to talk to you guys about being a photographer and also what it's like to start your own business and work for yourself. I specialize mostly in weddings, but I also shoot events, engagements, and portraits. So I hear this is the last day of your digital photography class, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys find it interesting? Any of you thinking about pursuing photography? or? It's interesting. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, even if you don't want to pursue photography, if you're thinking about maybe starting your own business of another type, Hopefully this will still be relevant to you. So I first got interested in photography right around your age. I went to an honors vocational high school in Monmouth County called Communications High School. It was a theme-based school like yours, so I got to take a bunch of photo classes, and that's where I learned I really liked photography, and I pursued it ever since. When the time came for me to apply to college, I already knew I wanted to major in photography, but I also decided to minor in business, which ended up being a really good decision. When you own your own photography business, you spend probably 20% of your time actually taking pictures, and the rest of the 80% is paperwork, contracts, client relationships, all that kind of stuff. If you know all this stuff going in, it'll really help your business thrive. And these are things that you won't necessarily learn in photo classes. So if you are thinking about pursuing starting your own business, I definitely recommend minoring in business. In 2013, in my junior year of college, I was taking a class called Commercial Photography. And all of our assignments, lectures by photographers, and studio visits really solidified in my mind that this is what I wanted to do. So in that April, I decided to incorporate my business and form an LLC, and later I'll explain what that means and how you go about doing it. There's no real standard day in the life for me. Because I specialize mostly in weddings, my workflow kind of goes through some cycles. It's mostly based around wedding season. So this is when people are most often getting married. So this is generally from April to November. During this time of year, uh, during the weekends, I'm just constantly shooting. So sometimes I'm shooting one wedding a weekend, sometimes it's two, every once in a while three per weekend. And then throughout the week, during the weekdays, is when I do all my editing. Later on in the year, from November to February, is engagement season. So people aren't so much getting married this time of year, a lot of people are getting engaged. So there's a little lull in how much I'm shooting this time of year. So this is a good time for me to um, catch up on my advertising, updating my website, coming up with new packages, going to bridal shows, networking events, and it's also a good time for me to design and print the albums from the weddings that year. And then this time of year, January to March, um, a little while after people get engaged, is when they'll start booking their photographers. So this time of year, I'm um, going on a lot of meetings, writing contracts, um, signing contracts, and eventually booking. All right, so I'm going to go through some of my work and talk about a dip typical day in the life during wedding. I'll these out. So my day usually starts with the getting ready portion of the day. This usually involves the bride getting her hair and makeup done, getting dressed. So in addition to capturing the bride getting ready, it's also really important to capture all the details. So her bouquet, there's a boutonniere, shoes, rings, all that kind of stuff. I also love to get really close up macro shots of the ring, especially if there's any special details on it, like engravings. And then the same thing goes for over at the groom's location, so you have to capture all of his details, so cufflinks, shoes, socks, any important details that there are. And then before we head to the ceremony location, I like to get a portrait of just the groom alone and the bride alone. While they're all nicely put together, hair and makeup's all good, clothes are all nice. And then if time allows, I also like to get um, a shot of just the groomsmen alone and just the bridesmaids alone. So I like to get a mix of the formal pose shots and then one that's a little more fun, candid, with them walking and interacting, something a little less stiff. Mm -hmm. So the most high pressure part of the day is definitely the ceremony. So because you can't instruct them during the ceremony, you can't pose them, you have to be on your toes ready at all times. So before the ceremony starts, I always test my settings, make sure my camera's ready to go. <clears throat> so I like to shoot with a mix of long and wide shots. So I'll coordinate with my second shooter before the ceremony starts. So we each have two cameras with uh, two lenses on each of them. So if she's shooting more of the long, uh, close-up shots, I'll shoot the wide shots, or vice versa. And we also like to kind of split up where we are in the room, so we get different angles of the ceremony. Reaction shots are also really important to get, especially the groom's reaction when the bride's walking down the aisle. And then I also like to look around in the seats to get reaction shots from family and friends. 
And then after the ceremony is usually when I take uh, portraits of the couple, and then the whole bridal party, and then also family portraits. And then usually we'll go take uh, photos at different spots around the ceremony location, maybe the reception location. And if time allows, sometimes we'll go to a nearby park or a beach. <clears throat> and after we're done with all the portraits, it's cocktail hour. So this is mostly just candid shots of the guests, maybe some post shots, of course detail shots, and shots of the food. <clears throat> so when capturing details, definitely focus on any handmade details. So the general rule of thumb is the more time or money they spent on it, the more important it is to capture it. So before cocktail hour ends, I like to go into the reception location before they let the guests in, get some table shots, shots of the details while everything is still untouched. And then when the reception starts, it usually begins with the first dance, sometimes a father-daughter dance, mother-son dance, and then that's usually followed by toasts and speeches. So after that, the rest of the night is a lot more low pressure. So there aren't too many time-sensitive shots that you can miss. It's mostly just getting good candidates, dancing shots, and more detail shots. <coughs> of course, you should still be on the lookout for cute moments. Flower girls and ring bearers are usually always a good thing to capture. And then the last big event of the night is usually the cake cutting, and then sometimes there's a bouquet toss or garter toss. Sometimes there's a big send-off that you need to get pictures of. This couple had a fireworks show at the end of the night. And then sometimes there's a sparkler exit. And nowadays it's become pretty popular to get a big group shot of all the guests at the end of the night. So that's pretty much an average wedding day. Because weddings are typically in the summer from anywhere from March and April to October and November, it's really good to shoot other things like events and portraits and product photography because those things happen all year round. So especially in November and December, there's a little spike in portraits. People like photos for Christmas cards for Christmas presents, so it's a good way to fill up your slow months and also supplement your income year-round. So the rest of the time when I'm not shooting weddings, I shoot a lot of events like bar mitzvahs, sweet 16s, I also shoot some communions, baptisms, <laughs> bridal showers, birthday parties, proposals, and I'm located in Jersey City, so I shoot a lot of uh, New York City events. Some of them are corporate events, award shows. I do some fundraisers. I've got to shoot a few events with celebrities like Ruben Stutter, Elisa Dushku, Christy Turlington, and Meryl Streep. And finally, in addition to events, I also shoot some headshots, professional portraits, <coughs> baby portraits. Oh. <laughs> and a little bit of product photography. Okay, so apart from actual photographic skills, these are some good traits to have if you want to be a wedding photographer. So personality is really important. You want to be compatible with the bride and groom, with the guests, with the family. You want to have the type of personality that gets along with everyone. Um, so because it's a big day for the bride and groom, you also want to be caring. You want to have your heart in what you're doing. It'll really show in your photos and they'll be able to tell if you really want to be there. You also want to be kind of physically fit. So most weddings are six to 12, sometimes even more hours. So you want to be able to be on your feet all day, carrying around your equipment all day. You want to be commanding. So you want to be able to direct large groups, especially for the bridal party pictures, for family portraits. You want to be assertive when you have to be. You want to be a storyteller. So like telling a story through photos. You want to have a decent memory so you can remember what shots you've already gotten. <clears throat> I know some people, if they don't have the greatest memory, they'll make a shot list for themselves so they can check it off as they go along. You want to have a uh, pretty good intuition, so kind of being able to predict the next events, what's going to happen next, and that also kind of goes along with experience. So the more weddings you shoot, the, more, the better understanding you have of how weddings go. So I found this funny thing online about pros of being your own boss. I love working for myself from home. I get along with everyone in the office, I can show up in pajamas, and I always win employee of the month. The best perk, in my opinion, is that you get to work from home. So you don't have to commute anywhere, you don't have to work in a cubicle, there's no 9 to 5 office environment. You also get to make your own hours, so if you're more productive at night, you can work at night. If you like working in the morning, you can do that. Um, and you also have full control over your business, so you're not relying on anyone else to give you a raise. You basically determine the harder you work, the more weddings you're going to book, the more busy you're going to be, and the more income you're going to get. So you have all the control. But there are some cons. So like I mentioned before, 
the schedule and the income fluctuates, especially if you shoot weddings. So you have to be able to kind of ride out the slower months. You also have to be good at juggling tasks. So I'm a one woman show. I'm the only person in my company, so I have to handle everything. So <clears throat> I have to be my own accountant, my own secretary. I have to do my own advertising. So you wanna, if you're gonna be the only person in your business, you wanna be kind of well-rounded and be able to do a bunch of different tasks. And then the last con, some people find that when you're your own boss, it gives you too much freedom. There's no boss or no teacher around telling you when things are due, when your deadlines are, what you should be doing that day. <clears throat> so you have to be able to crack the whip on yourself sometimes. So experience and portfolio are huge. The first thing a client looks at when they're looking to hire someone is their portfolio. So the quality of the work, their style. Even if you're just starting out, I would recommend even just shooting events for your family members, for friends, or just charging very little amount just so you get started and you have a portfolio to show. And a good way to do that is by second shooting. So like I mentioned, for weddings, I have a second photographer, so you can offer to second shoot for someone. And internships. Internships are also a great way to get experience and learn from someone who's doing what you want to do. All right, so these are some of the things I did throughout high school to help get me where I am today. So do you guys have clubs here? Like extracurricular yeah. things? Yeah. Do you have a photo club? Not yet. No? Just okay. Yeah. You could start one. Um, <clears throat> so in my high school, we had a photo club. So that's where I got a lot of my experience starting out. Do you guys have Skills USA? Do you know no. what that is, Skills USA? It's like a group where um, you go out and compete against people in similar fields. And you can, if you're good, you can win you know, state awards, sometimes national awards. So <clears throat> if there are any uh, competitions you can be a part of, that's really good. Um, to be able to put on your resume that you won an award for photography is really great. And then obviously you're doing the right thing, being here in relevant classes. And then you can also take extra classes. So like I mentioned before, if you own your own business, you kind of got to have to be able to be good at a bunch of things. So I hear you guys have a Photoshop class, right? Mm -hmm. So classes like that are really good. That's definitely something you'll need to know. And then these are some of the classes I would recommend taking in college. So like I said before, business minor is super helpful. But even if you don't want to take um, the whole minor, sometimes you can just take individual business classes. So some classes I loved were entrepreneurship. So that obviously is very relevant. It teaches you about starting your own business, running your own business. Intro to marketing. Obviously, you have to do all your own marketing, so that's good to know. Services marketing is uh, for specifically service businesses. And then, like I said before, you can also take electives like graphic design, web design, and internships. Internships are great. So whenever you decide you're ready to start your business, these are the steps you would take to start it. So a LLC is a limited liability corporation. So basically what that means is it's a business usually with one owner, but it's a separate entity from you as a person. So that's good in case you were to get sued or something, they can't go after you personally, they can only go after your business. <clears throat> the first step I would spend a good amount of time on is picking your business name, because once you file everything with that business name, it's hard to change it. So my business name, Lynn Prinnell Photography, is my first and middle name. So the reason I went with that is my first name is Chinese, my middle name is Danish. So that combination is very rare. So if you were to Google Lynn Pernil, you would probably only find me. <clears throat> so that's a good thing in your business because say you have a very common name and you named your business after it. So like Mike Smith Photography. If someone were to Google that, they would find tons of Mike Smith Photographies. So you want people to find your business so that you get that booking. You don't want other people to get that booking. So if you have a very generic name and you want to just give your company a name, like Shutterbug photography or whatever, that's also good. Once you have your name ready and you're ready to go, you would just go to the um, NJ State website, you would follow all the instructions, you would decide what type of business you want. So like I said, LLC usually works best for these types of businesses. And then it'll take you back to the IRS website. So then you need to get an FEIN. <clears throat> Basically, you as a person have a social security number and your business would get an FEIN. Basically, it's just a number they assign to your business that's separate from you as a person. And then once you have that number, you can get business accounts, you can file taxes, and you have an official business. So that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions on anything? Go ahead. Me? Yep. Um, so you said that it would be good to take courses like web developing and graphic design? Yes. The other two courses I'm actually thinking of majoring in college. Mm -hmm. So do you know how to run HTML and stuff like that? That's funny. I actually just redesigned my blog. I'm laughing at him because he told me I need to know how to do that. Um, <clears throat> so yes, uh, I have a basic knowledge. I wouldn't say I'm a professional. Thing. You have your own website, right? I do, yes. 
Okay. So my sister actually, I'm lucky. My sister knows a lot about HTML, so she helped me. But yes, you definitely need to know. So I just started a new blog, so I had to learn PHP for that. Yeah. I didn't say that too. yeah. So that's great. If you if you're able to know how to do those things yourself, you can save a lot of money by not having to hire a graphic designer. So knowing how to do everything yourself is good sometimes. I take online courses sometimes. That's good. I was going to say that too. So <clears throat> if your high school or college doesn't offer the courses that you wanted to take, you can online nowadays, you can find workshops, tutorials, even just like YouTube videos. All right. Anybody else? Yep. So um, what's the whole process? To, uh, like, uh, how much time does it take to get all that final? Like you mean editing a wedding or? No, I mean. Uh, business wise or? Yes. Like your, your own business. Like how long did it take to finalize? Um, you mean like just starting it or like? Yeah, yeah just starting. So um, in terms of like building up a portfolio, I did that slowly. So I started in high school um, and I didn't incorporate my business until 2013. So it was like four or five years of slowly shooting on the weekends. Um, but then when you actually go to start it, <clears throat> within a couple hours, maybe an hour, you do everything online. Um, and then you have to wait a little to get a certificate in the mail. But then once you have that certificate, you have your number. You can go to a bank, start a business bank account, and then you're pretty good. Yeah. So about like a week. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody have any questions about the technology that she uses, costs, anything like that? What's yeah. the most expensive lens you have? Um, <laughs> my 135 millimeter, it's about a thousand bucks. But the one thing I'll tell you is um, lenses don't really go out of style. So if you buy a good lens, they don't really depreciate in value. So if one day you wanted to sell it online and get a new one, they don't go down that much. But the actual camera itself, it's like a computer. Every year they come out with newer models, better functions. So if you're going to invest in anything, invest in good lenses, and then camera, every couple of years you have to upgrade. So. And, um, do you have a preference on where you buy them from? Or? Um, <coughs> I love B and H. B and H is good. They have a good used department too. Um, Amazon, if it's from a trusty uh, company, Adorama is another camera company. Do you trust Best Buy? Oh, yeah, Best Buy's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Jordan, do you have a question? Um, mm -hmm. What kind of camera do you use? I have so I have two cameras. So shooting a wedding, I like to have two. So I have a different lens on each, and they're both Nikon D750s. So it's good to have a full frame camera. So that means that <clears throat> some digital cameras are uh, crop sensor, some are full frame. So crop, uh, full frame is just better um, in low light. So a lot of wedding receptions are kind of dark. So that's really good. Um, the photos are higher megapixels, higher quality, um, just all around better. Less noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what made you want to become a photographer? Um, honestly, I just. In high school, went to one photo club meeting, and then my friend was in photo club. I just kept going and did all the little contests they did, and I don't know, it just clicked. Yeah. 